Hey, what's up? John Sanmez from simpleprogrammer.com. So I got a question today about how to comprehend someone else's code. I think as a programmer, this is something that we can struggle with quite a bit is you know, you get on a project and you're given this code base and someone who wrote the code uh, was smoking, smoking the crack pipe and, uh, and you don't know what the heck that this code does. So I got this question from uh, Andres and he says, hey John, first of all, thanks for your blog and videos. I've been following them for a while now and really appreciate your opinion, which sometimes gives me another point of view about some topics. I have a question for you that maybe you could talk about in a coming video. How do you, uh, how do you apprehend someone else's code? I think he means comprehend, but you know, I can tell you how to apprehend someone's code. You just <laughs> how to snag that. Indeed, I have been an Android dev for three years now and still, when I know I have to check or do some work on a code that wasn't written by myself, I'm still feeling uncomfortable. Sometimes I end up spending a lot of time on just understanding the logic behind it and sometimes I feel like it's so outdated slash messy, not efficient that I just want to change everything. But anyway, what are your thoughts on how to work with someone else's code? Uh, thanks a lot, John. Keep up the good work and forget the haters. Cheers from New Zealand, Andres. So, Andres, uh, so there's a couple of things I'd recommend. First of all, I'm going to recommend a book. It's called Working Effective with Legacy Code. That definitely is going to help you a lot. Read that book because that, that will help you. Uh, I'll recommend actually another book called Code Complete, uh, which you may have already read. This is also another good book that, uh, that will help you to write clean code and write good code. And if you understand how to write good code, you're going to be able to understand code better as well. But, you know, in general, what you want to do is so, some of your instincts are right. Sometimes the only way that I can understand someone's code when it's really bad is to rewrite it myself. So oftentimes, you know, I will look at some legacy code that's really poorly written and I will go through it line by line figuring out what each thing does and then like maybe I'll go through like three or four lines, figure out what that chunk does and I'll rewrite that chunk. I'll refactor it and rewrite that into uh, into a function, into something that's understandable, you know, writing really good clean code. Again, I'll, I'll recommend another book for that which is Clean Code by Robert Martin which I, I highly recommend. But I'll go and I'll basically refactor the code as I'm going. So I'll go and understand a piece and refactor that piece and make it more and more understandable. And so the thing is like if, so, if you've got this like 200 line function that you that is obscure and you don't understand but it works, even if you just go through that code and study that code, it's going to be really hard for you to grasp because you can only hold so many things in your head at, at a time, right? That's why phone numbers are seven digits long because that's about how many things you can hold in your head. And so what you got to do is you got to figure out a way to manage the complexity. And for me, it, it was the same as your instincts is I just rewrite the code. So I figure out what that code does, right? I maybe write a unit test around the existing code if I can isolate that piece so that I can test that to make sure that it works. And then I refactor the code and rewrite the code once I understand what it does in a way that makes a lot more sense and it's a lot easier to read and understand, some clean code, if you will. And then I run the unit test to make sure it still works exactly the same way it does. And you can go through big chunks of code. And so what you could do is maybe you have like this 200 line function and you go through and you refactor bits and pieces of it into their own functions and functionality and you understand what all those little bits and pieces do and then you can kind of combine that together and maybe even rewrite the whole thing to make it cohesive and, and so that it, it makes sense. But you know, that's, that's really the approach you gotta take and, and along with that is, is this idea that just go line by line and make sure you understand exactly what each line is doing. Take notes, right, you know, and, and clean up lines as you can. If you've got some, you know, it, it's like you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna be, you're like an archeologist, like brushing away the dirt, right, and, and to be able to see the fossil or see, you know, the, whatever is underneath there and you do a little bit, a little bit and you get more details and then you do a little bit more, a little bit more and it becomes, comes more into focus and becomes clear, it's the same thing. Go through one pass of the code and clean up the things that you can as you go through each line. If the line doesn't make sense, rewrite write that line. You know, as you go through and you go through five lines of code and you now can collapse that into one or collapse into a function and then 
you're going to make it so that you're managing that complexity, right? So you take this, this huge thing and you break it into smaller pieces that you understand and you'll understand the bigger thing, right? It's, it's using abstractions too, right? If you take something, even you know, five or six lines of code, and you can write a function that you can name that says what that does, you never have to think about those five or six lines again. You can have an abstraction that you use that's one line that says what that does and you understand what that does. You don't understand, you don't need to remember how it works anymore, right? Just like you don't need to know what's going on underneath the hood in your car, of your car, right? You're, we use abstractions all the time as software developers. So I find that to be the most effective way to understand and to figure out what someone else's code does and to work with legacy code is to just create abstractions, rewrite, refactor the code as, as you're as you're going through it, you know, because again, the other thing to think about too is if you're going to spend all this time going through that old code, and you understand it one time, you need to gonna, you're going to need to understand it again. So it's a wasted effort if it only gives you the value once. But if you refactor it as you're going and rewrite that code, and then now it's clearer for anyone to understand, including yourself. Now you've created some value. You don't have to go back through. Nothing is worse than going and figuring out how something works and not documenting the process and then going back three weeks later and spending the same amount of time figuring it out again. So anyway, great question. Uh, if you have a question for me, you can always email me at john at simpleprogrammer.com. And if you like this video, uh, I got a request for you, which is to click that subscribe button and you'll get, uh, I do about two to three videos a day, believe it or not, on all kinds of topics, not just career advice, but fitness, finance, uh, you name it, mental, the mental game, entrepreneurship, everything that has to do with growing yourself and becoming uh, the best person that you can and, and realizing your potential. So anyway, I'd appreciate it if you subscribed. If you're already a subscriber, you know, show some love with that like button. I'll talk to you next time. Take care.